God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll begin our study in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Mark. I want to pause to thank you for logging on, all of you that have been our regular listeners uh, from the beginning, and those of, the, of you that are new uh, joining our studies. I want you to know that I am happy that you're with us, and I, I want you to know how much I love you and how much I am grateful that you take of your valuable time to listen to this ministry. What we're doing, I am sharing with you my devotion, uh, my study through the Bible. I'm, I'm taping it uh, to help you and to also help myself uh, get a better picture and a better understanding of God's Word. We started in the Gospel. We started with the uh, Gospel of St. Matthew and went completely through that book. Soon we'll be offering that book for uh, uh, for your uh, your study library, you'll be able to uh, to get that from this ministry very soon. I hope, uh, hopefully, within a month, uh, so that your knowledge of the Word of God will grow. I want you to know that I don't think that I know it all. I don't think that I uh, have all of the answers, but I will do my very best to dig out the answers to share them with you. I am also uh, humble enough. If uh, there are scholars listening to this program, if you have something you might enlighten me on, I welcome you to email me or, or correspond with me in any way possible to enlighten me. Uh, that way I can put that as a part of my study. I will not try to make everybody believe that I I, I, I have every picture and every point of the scripture uh, uh, down uh, or all of the knowledge of it. I am a man and I'm trying to learn all that I can so that I can share with those who listen to this ministry. So I encourage you, if you have an enlightenment for me, uh, any type of way, any word of encouragement, get a hold of me. And at the end of this program, I will give you my address, my email numbers, and things of that nature so that you can correspond with me. As we go to the 10th chapter and the first verse of the Gospel of St. Mark, I trust that you have your Bible and you're reading along with us as we study. Uh, well, the Bible reads, and he, he, he arose from there, and cometh unto the border of Judea, by the farther side of the Jordan. And the people resorted unto him again, and as was his custom, he taught them. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus always took time to, to teach people. You have to understand, he had the word of God. He was an anointed uh, uh, person. He was the anointed, uh, and his words came forth with such power. People loved to hear him just teach and, and listen to his wisdom. So they resorted to him for more than one reason. Uh, many come to be healed and many come to be prayed for and, and to be delivered from their distresses, but many came just to hear his words uh, because he taught as one that had authority and not as the, the Pharisees and the scribes. Uh, so just as uh, uh, normal, uh, when he went to this region, uh, uh, the people flocked to him to hear what he had to say, and Jesus took time to talk to them. In verse 2, and the Pharisees came unto him and asked him, is it lawful for a man to put away his, his wife, testing him? You have to understand, they were always uh, trying Jesus, and we've talked about this on several occasions, the spirit of the Pharisees and, and uh, what they were about. They were trying to trick Jesus at his words and get him to say something wrong uh, uh, so they could accuse him in front of the people, and, as, and after accusing him in front of the people, make him look bad enough uh, so the people would not follow them or uh, follow him or or turn from them uh, uh, they always had some type of manipulation going on and they asked Jesus this question is it lawful for a man to put away his wife testing him they asked for a reason uh, and uh, he answered talking about Jesus Jesus answered and said unto them uh, what did Moses command you uh, and they said Moses permitted a man to write a bill of divorcement uh, and to put away put Put her away. Well, uh, Moses did do that. Uh, and Jesus answered and said unto them, uh, For the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this precept. Uh, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, uh, and they too shall be one flesh. Uh, so then they are no more two, but one flesh. Uh, what therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. 
Well, when you're talking about marriage, you are uh, uh, really getting into uh, a subject not only in the days of Jesus, but even in the day that we live, you're, you're getting into uh, a subject that uh, uh, you can really make enemies or you can make friends. Uh, well, uh, and that's really why the Pharisees uh, asked Jesus this question, because uh, uh, it is such a controversial issue. Uh, we find in, in the day that we live uh, that uh, the divorce rate is above 50%. Uh, uh, they have it around 52%. That's more than half of the marriages. Half of the people that get married, uh, married their marriage ends in divorce. And that's an alarming statistic. Uh, but I am not here to, to bash everyone that has... Uh, has uh, uh, has been through divorce because we live in a real life. Uh, our society is different than it was in uh, uh, yesteryear, so I'm not here to bash people that have been divorced, uh, nor am I here to uh, make divorce seem all right and uh, make it seem like uh, uh, everything is hunky-dory when you, when you divorce your spouse. I'm not here to do that either. Uh, but Jesus, uh, he took a stand on that and let them know that it was because of the hardness of their heart uh, that and Moses wrote uh, uh, and uh, wrote that they could uh, uh, give a bill of divorcement to their spouse. Uh, well, let me let you know we live in a, in a real life, and and things happen, and and you can't judge every case and every situation the same. And and uh, I would not uh, go as far as to say everybody that's been divorced is going to go to hell and all that kind of stuff. I would never say that uh, because God judges matters not as we judge, and uh, He also told us not to set any judgment uh, on other people. So I would be careful if I was you. Uh, I'm careful myself in judging other people uh, uh, because I don't know what happened in their lives. Uh, I don't know what happened in their marriage and, and uh, uh, I would not try to judge and say this one's going to hell or that one's going to hell or this one's right and that one's wrong. Uh, uh, I did. G uh, Jesus did uh, uh, discuss it further. Uh, uh, Matthew's gospel wrote a little bit more about it. Uh, this account uh, than Mark did. Uh, remember what I told you as we started this, that these men all were writing about the same man and many times writing about the same incident, but they were writing it uh, as according to their view. Uh, I gave you uh, 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 scripture and told you who these uh, writers were, the gospel writers, and their their relationship with Jesus. Uh, you can go all the way back to the beginning of this ministry and get some intelligence on that uh, as to who these men were and how they perceived things. Uh, well, they didn't write it uh, uh, the, sa the same words uh, on the same scenario. Uh, they used their own mind, their own intellect, uh, and wrote things as they saw it. Uh, some gave a more vivid pictures in, in parts of the, the scripture, uh, parts of the uh, words of Jesus and the acts of Jesus. Uh, others did not give uh, as deep uh, 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 a revelation on whatever subject. Uh, maybe another subject they gave a deeper revelation. Uh, but uh, looking at the same picture they had different words that they brought the uh, and brought a different scenario or, or the way they saw what Jesus did and what Jesus said uh, and what he taught. We find in Matthew's gospel, uh, uh, Matthew uh, went a little bit deeper when uh, Jesus was giving his, his teaching on divorce. Uh, uh, Jesus said that if a man should put away his wife, except it be for the cause of fornication. Uh, so that gave to many people a, 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 a loophole for them to get out. To, uh, perhaps if their spouse cheated on them or, or they found some type of uncleanliness uncleanli uh, in, in them, uh, they would want to divorce them. But I would go as far as to say that uh, uh, even if that uh, extreme happened in your marriage, uh, uh, it's just it, it's still not uh, calls for everybody to get divorced uh, because sometimes people can come to repentance uh, uh, and, and change their lives uh, and straighten their lives out, and, and marriages can be reconciled. So I am not here to uh, to uh, uh, bash those that have been divorced, and I'm not here to uh, 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 lift those that uh, that that. that uh, 
uh, uh, well, I, I'm trying to trying to choose my words here. I'm not I'm not here trying to uh, uh, make uh, marriage seem like a bed of roses and everybody's everybody is bound to stay together. Uh, but then again, I'm not here to judge anybody's marriage and anybody's relationship. Uh, well, because uh, uh, things happen in life. This is a very real life, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you don't know what really causes things. Sometimes we can look on the surface, but when you start digging beneath the surface you you go to go to finding out uh, and, and I'm not telling you to dig beneath the surface it's not for you to do uh, that's not your job to dig off into people's relationships uh, that's God uh, that's God's business dealing with people in in their situation uh, but many times things happen under the surface uh, it may seem like this and it this is the way it is on the uh, on the surface uh, or when you when you take a quick glance at something uh, but when you dig down deeper into uh, that relationship relationship or to the things that happen. Uh, many times uh, uh, it's not exactly the way you see it. Uh, number one, get this in your mind and in your spirit. Uh, God did not make you and he did not make me the judge of other people's marriage. Uh, and he did not make us the judge if they should be together or not be together. So you need to tread light on that and, and, and uh, number one, give people some leeway uh, and don't try to send everybody to hell because number one, you don't don't have hell. You don't own. You don't have a mortgage on it. Uh, you can't collect it. Uh, well, so you need to just leave people alone. You can't put. The, you don't have a hell to put no one in. Uh, nor do you have a heaven to put anyone in. Uh, so you should leave those type of things alone. Uh, let God judge those matters. Uh, we're living in a day now that we're above fifty percent in the marriages. I must commend those that stay together uh, uh, through the storm. Some have been married thirty, forty, and fifty years, and some even. 60 years. Uh, they have to be commend commended uh, because uh, uh, whether they will talk about it or not, they've had some rocky storms in their relationship, but they chose to stay together. Uh, they chose to go through that storm uh, and not put each other away. Uh, well, I will go as far as to say this. Uh, usually when a marriage breaks up, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's some fuck coming from both sides. Uh, not all of it come, uh, come from the same direction. Uh, well, uh, uh, I'll say that again. Uh, many times uh, there is some fault on both sides, uh, and it's not your job or my job to judge the matter. Uh, number one, the, the, the one thing that we should be doing uh, is praying, number one, for our own relationships, uh, and also praying for the relationships of others, uh, that God will uh, put some cohesiveness in marriage uh, so that it's not so easy or uh, people will have a conscience uh, and not walk away from their spouse. Uh, but I want you to know Many people are doing it nowadays. Uh, we have different laws. We live in a different society. Uh, even than it was uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, it's in a, we're in a different society. Uh, when you got this uh, this movement and that movement and, and this rights and that rights and all that kind of stuff put in, people just don't do and don't have that perseverance like they used to have. In so many words, we've gotten to the place now we really don't need each other. Whoops. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said it that way, but uh, you really don't need each other except for physical intimacy. Well, uh, I'm going to tell you, it takes more than physical intimacy to keep a marriage together. I'm not here to do a marriage counseling uh, today. In fact, I, I, try to, I try to get away from those. Why? Because it's most of the time it's so much involved uh, 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 that, uh, uh, that's beneath the surface. Uh, that to really pull all of that out, uh, it's hard to do an effective counseling service unless both sides are totally willing to be open. Well, I'm not going into that uh, matter today, but divorce is a serious issue uh, in our world. Divorce is a serious issue uh, in, <coughs> please excuse me, in the United States of America. Well, uh, there, there are people divorced, I will say, uh, that did not choose to be divorced. Uh, they did not ask to be divorced. Uh, it just happened that way. Uh, they did not ask their spouse to leave, but they chose to leave. Well, uh, uh, so uh, what can you do? Uh, do you, do you, uh, 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 do you uh, silence this person that has gone through divorce? Uh, maybe God's Spirit does still use them, uh, and they have a message to portray. What do you do? What do you do? Do you, do you try to silence them and not hear them just because they went through divorce? 
Number one, God is always the judge. And if he has his hand on someone, you shouldn't be the one to try to hurt them and hold them down. Why? 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 Because number one, we all have a soul and we all have a personal relationship with, with God. And you cannot judge every situation the same. Well, let me let me hurry along here. My time is uh, rapidly moving by. Uh, in verse 10, and, and, and in the house his disciples asked him again of the same matter. And he said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committed adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she commits adultery. Jesus made it plain. Can you understand? He said almost the same things in front of the, the, the Pharisees or, or, or in front of the multitude. But when he got uh, with his disciples, he just put it blunt on the table. Well, this is the way it is. Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committed adultery against her. And and if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, and, uh, she committed adultery. Well, let me read on very quickly. And they besought, they brought young uh, children to him uh, that uh, he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. Uh, but when Jesus saw it, uh, he was much displeased and said unto them, uh, suffer or permit the little children to come unto me and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter into it. And uh, he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. How important is the young folks and is the children. And, and Jesus saw that, how important they was. And he rebuked his disciples were trying to, to shoo them off. And you can understand the disciples, uh, uh, they uh, had a great multitude of people there and, and uh, they were business minded and, and wanted things to, to click along. They were Jesus' helpers and, and they wanted everything to click along as possible, uh, as quick and, and, and uh, orderly as possible. Uh, and they rebuked the children, them for bringing the children. Uh, but I want you to know God or Jesus, uh, God and Jesus has a, has a very very large interest in our children. Uh, he wants them to, to come to him. Uh, and I, I, I got to say, he wants even us to have a heart for the young people in this world, uh, in the United States of America. He wants us to have a heart for young people and reach out for them, uh, pray for them, and, and do whatever we can to help them, uh, <laughs> excuse me, and keep their mind channeled uh, toward the things of God. Beloved, I am not uh, at all boasting in myself, nor will I ever do that, because I believe whatever I do is as unto the Lord. But I, I told you before, I was a pastor of a good church, and, and God blessed me to purchase a, a 46-passenger uh, Greyhound-type bus. Uh, and I bought that bus, and, and the young folks, I, 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 I had special interest in them, and I, I took them to conventions uh, all over the United States of America. And anything I tell you, I can prove. I got the I got uh, the receipts and everything you want to see. Whatever comes out of my mouth, I can prove it. One thing about it, this man is not a liar. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, well, I, I took young people uh, all over this country. I can tell you specific conventions I took them to. Uh, I served in the churches of God in Christ uh, as a uh, as a, a frontline minister for uh, near 30 years, uh, uh, 29 years or so uh, to be exact. And I was a pastor in that uh, organization and also an evangelist uh, uh, in that organization uh, uh, where I preached here and abroad. But I, I bought this uh, a 45, 46 passenger bus, a uh, uh, Greyhound type bus equipped with the, uh, the bathrooms and all that kind of stuff. And I took young folks uh, uh, all the way uh, to different places in this country. Uh, first, I took them to, uh, what a, one, at one time, it was the, the Youth Congress in the Churches of God in Christ. Uh, I took them all the way to Milwaukee. And then they changed from the Youth 
Congress to the uh, International Ames Convention, uh, the Auxiliaries in Ministry, and, and I took young people all over this country. I can name you a few places. I, I took them to Milwaukee. I took them to Indianapolis, Indiana. I took them to Charlotte, North Carolina. I took them to uh, uh, Los Angeles, California, down here in Texas, uh, 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 other places in Texas where they had the, uh, the Ames Convention. Uh, I, I took them all over uh, so they could see other young people uh, and see that there are other, other young people across this nation uh, have a heart for God uh, and that they were doing something for God. Uh, and when I took them back to the town that I pastored in, in Oklahoma, I took them there, uh, took them back home, and then uh, after a while I saw them organizing little groups. They got, got them little singing groups together and, and uh, got them little uh, uh, march teams and things of that nature and, and started doing things. Uh, uh, there at the church that I pastored uh, because they, were, they saw other young people doing things uh, and they came home and then they had a mind to do things. Uh, so it's important for us to love young people and, and tuck them under our wings and do special things for them uh, and let them know that, that, that serving God is not a drag. Uh, serving the Lord is not a drag. Uh, it's, it's a real pick-me-up uh, if you do it right. Uh, well, I took them places and they enjoyed themselves. They saw other young people come from all over this country uh, to worship God uh, and to exercise their talents. Uh, it brought out talents in them. Uh, why? Because somebody took an interest in them. Uh, and we should do the same thing to our young people uh, in the day that we live. Uh, well, my time is rapidly running out for this session, uh, but I want you to know I love you, my friends. Uh, if you would like to talk to me for any reason, uh, if you have questions uh, or if you can enlighten me in areas, uh, I would love to hear from you. Uh, you can write me, 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, uh, San Antonio, Texas, uh, 78244. You can also reach me at my website, uh, www.poemsbychester.com. Uh, remember, I love you, my friends, uh, with the love of the Lord. God bless you.